And now for our weekly news segment. Get that honey, huh? Pretty good, right? Yeah, it's, um, it's honey mixed with pollen. It's got the pollen particles in it. And then it's got propolio, and then it's got the um, the royal jelly in there. It's like a, a mix Ooh, they mix. That's fancy. Yep. Well, it's just natural. Uh, so gotta, first story be. we got is probably the biggest one of the week, past couple weeks, is Binance CEO to step down and plead guilty in anti-money money laundering probe. So uh, CZ is going to step down as CEO of Binance, and he's going to plead guilty to... Uh, violations of U.S. AML laws and requirements, and he's going to be paying, or Binance will be paying a $4.3 billion fine at federal court. Uh, and it's it's part of a deal. Um, part of the deal is he's also giving up his leadership role at Binance, but he'll continue to have a majority ownership of the crypto exchange. Binance is set to plead guilty to the related charges, sources added. Actually, putting it into the DOJ investigation spanning nearly five years. So, yeah, Binance, it finally happened. Everyone was just waiting for it. Um, unfortunately, the the only reason they're really getting in trouble is because of, like we talked earlier, it's it's you know it's the wrong reasons. It's because oh they're in comply with AML, Bank Secrecy Act, all this BS, whatever. Not because we've been manipulating the market heavily for the past, you know five years or whatever and screwing customers over left and right for no reason. It's probably got little to do with that and more to do with uh, them not complying with government laws as much as the government wants them to, even though they still have a lot of KYC, whatever. So that's Binance. Um, And of course the train just continues Uh, the, uh, the clown Gensler train us SEC sues Kraken for unregistered securities trading. So Kraken now, the, the SEC is cracking down on Kraken, um, which we'll I see, see what you did there. <laughs> yes, of course, nice. uh, we'll see how legitimate this ends up becoming. But Kraken, um, I guess, knowing for being one of the the better exchanges, I don't know if any of these exchanges are like that great. But um, I guess the general consensus that I've understood of Kraken is that they're they're less, much less egregious than all these other ones, especially like Binance. I don't think anyone compared to Binance. But the SEC is going to try and get cracking now after they just finished. It's like they're they're done with one. They're going on to the next one. They're gonna they're going after Kraken for some uh, unregistered securities trading violations and other SEC violations, probably. Uh, SEC also accused Kraken of co-mingling customers' funds with its own. According to the agency, Kraken held up to $5 billion of customers' cash and bank accounts and paid operational expenses from these accounts. The exchange also allegedly mixed up $33 billion of customers' crypto assets with its own assets, risking losses. So uh, the SEC's lawsuit hinges on cryptocurrencies like BTC, Ethereum, Tether, uh, and the like being securities. U.S. Congress has passed a firm law classifying cryptocurrencies as securities, but the SEC asserts they meet the legal definitions of securities. So yeah, that's the SEC just going ahead and doing whatever the hell it wants, as usual. Uh, we'll see what happens with this. Of course, this will probably be drawn out for another three, four years, whatever. Next up, uh, we've got some updates to Cake Wallet. So uh, this is a, a smaller update, just a bunch of fixes and bug enhancements. But I did get... The uh the get get a ho or the the go ahead from Vic for announcing Ghost. in a week or two we will have polyseed support for Monero that is creating and restoring Monero polyseed. So that's a cool feature. That'll be out soon. What is that? We have, uh, Monero what, what, polyseed instead of twenty four um mm-hmm. pneumatic seed, it's a twelve word seed. Okay. And it allows it to also have extra data in there, like containing the block height, if I remember correctly. Oh, interesting. Within the seed itself, something like that. Um, if I remember, there's like uh let me let me see. I actually want to make sure I understand this correctly. And what were the uh, recent coin control fixes? Um, just just bug fixes. I don't exactly know what the bug fix was, but. Um, <laughs> Speaking of Cake Wallet, did you guys know that the Asteroid repo is kind of screwed up? Because apparently, like, it'll add on Droidify um, and some other Asteroid clients, but on the main Asteroid client, it will not add. It gives an error. 
Yeah, I think someone had reported that initially, and one of our guys was looking into that. We're not sure exactly what's going on. Um, it's possible it's there's something weird with the official client because the official client is not like maintained really, and the other ones are. So we'll, we'll have to figure out what's going on with that. The official client's but, maintained. Um, the old one or the new one? Because there's like an old one, and then there's like a kind of like a lighter version that is actually maintained. Both actually, um, both the F Droid and what's called F Droid Basic are both maintained. They've just gotten updates here recently. Um, they're on like an alpha, alpha two or whatever for w version one point nineteen point zero, released just a couple of days ago. Oh, okay, I got you. Yeah, we'll we'll see. I don't know what the deal with that is, but we'll we'll figure something out at some point. But yeah, there there'll be some other big features coming in the next few weeks that I can't talk about. So. If uh, yeah. if Cake's implementation of policy is the same that is on Feather Wallet, then it, yes, it, is. it does it does it does contain the um, the restore height, which is very very useful. That is super uh, useful. And was I wrong saying I think was it twelve or sixteen for Monero policy? I think it's uh, fourteen. Fourteen. Oh, fourteen. Okay. Yeah, it's the same oh, one. Um, no. How would it work? Let's say you, you know you want to down the road restore your Monero from something other than Cake Wallet, like from the actual like Monero client or something. Would you be able to use policy to do seed, that? Yeah, you can you can do it on Feather Wallet. Hmm. Yeah, Feather Wallet supports policy. I don't know if there's any other. Is yeah, there Monero GUI or Monero CLI? I don't know, I don't know if, it's, if there is a translator or something like a like a that you can convert one seed into the other. Yeah, there's got to be something. But, uh, but I, I don't see any downsides, really, for policies, so eventually it's going to be adopted, I guess. It'll everywhere. be universally adopted. Okay. Yeah. And it's way shorter. It's, 40, it's 14 words against 25. Yeah. Much easier. Yeah. And, Much easier and to on, write. The Anon <laughs> wallet supports policied as well. I want to say it's 16 words, but it, um, it definitely... Actually, I think yep, most you're right. I just found Tevitor's Polyseed repository. It is 16 versus 25 and supports an embedded wallet birthday to optimize restoring from the seed. I believe that's I can't really cool. say if Cake Wallet's going to actually utilize that in the initial um, support. Uh, I think so. I can't remember. I'm not 100% sure. But um, supports encryption by a passphrase, can store up to three custom bits, advanced checksum. Seeds are incompatible with different coins. So it's a large improvement over the basic 25 word pneumatic seed. And yep. what's nice is Feather supports this, uh, Anon supports this, and now Cake will support this. And you should be able to go between one and the other. So if you're going to a wallet that needs a 25 word seed, there should be a way within the wallet to get the 25 word seed and the poly seed as well, so you can see both. Mm -hmm. And Very each cool. wallet, and like a like Anon, for example, can restore from a poly seed or a twenty-five word seed. And I assume Cake will be the same way that you can restore from either. Yeah, yeah there'll be, there be an option um, both on both be wallet supported. creation to choose which one you want to use and on restore, of course. Uh, so if you don't want to use pneumatic, then you can still use, the, or if you don't use polyseed, you can still use the older 25 word pneumatic if you want to create a wallet with that. But yeah, so that's cool. Um, and that won't be, that's not in this update, of course. That'll be uh, a later update in a week or two. But next up, we've got a post from Intraceable just talking about uh, Yellen's basically just, I guess, threats to the crypto industry. I'll show this little video here. And let me be clear. We're also sending a message to the virtual currency industry more broadly today and for the future. Bring it. Virtual currency exchanges and financial technology firms wish to realize the tremendous benefits of being part of the U.S. financial system and serving U.S. customers. They must play by the rules. And if they do not, the U.S. government will take action. Dun dun dun. Yeah, so tell me about first, my first. <laughs> so my <laughs> first, my, my first thought is the benefits of being in the U.S. financial system. I don't see a whole lot of benefits. <laughs> yeah. Right. 
I the mean, first other problem. than the U.S. market, everything else is a pain in the ass. I mean, it seems like you should. It seems like if you're a crypto person, you should just stay far, far away from the U.S. Like that I'd, seems like I'd the best. Point option. out, like, did anybody notice how those people? Like, if you were just in a room full of people, right? And there's, you know, this guy over here, he's sitting at the bar, smiling, talking, have a good time. And there's that guy over there who's up to something cool. You know, those people who just look absolutely fucking miserable, right? And and, and nobody would ever want to go hang out with them. Look at the facial expressions on all four of those people. Like, they're the most unhappy human beings <laughs> you've ever seen in your entire life. Like, there is no fucking way that any rational human being would go over there and say, like, hey, let's do... Everybody would go over there and be like, would somebody just kill your kids? Or, like, just... I mean, they look like they're at a fucking funeral, right? It's just, like, the most miserable people ever. And then that chick like kept like touching her face and hair like she's anxious about being like the person that nobody wants to hang out with, the one right behind Janet Yellen, right? Yeah. Like she just keeps like trying to hide her face with her hands. And if you ever do like Yeah, if you ever do uh like uh body interpretation, right? Like the semantic um body interpretation, like she is absolutely grieving over her participation in what is going on right now. It's like, it's, these people always look like they act and it's, you know, the whole idea of you can totally judge a book by its cover. Like that chick is, she knows she's the bad guy, right? <laughs> it, but I digress. I'm just saying they're the most miserable people I've ever seen in my life. Like <laughs> they, they're never smiling. They never have anything positive to say. They're like super verbose about what they're trying to do because they're hiding the fact that they are the tyrants. Right, they can't just be I mean, like, we're gonna ban. They can't be like we're gonna ban crypto. They have to be like, if you want to participate in the financial system? You're just gonna have to. And it's like that kid in, in recess that's always like snitching to the the principal <laughs> or whatever. Like they're just the most horrible people to be around. And it's like, why do these people even get to talk for us in the first place? Nobody acts like that. Like you no normal be human evil, being is like, at least like if they're going to be evil, they can at least yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. You'd think yeah. that they would learn <laughs> from their master, the devil, and at least be fun about it. Right. Like it's at least you get the two week Coke bender before your life falls apart. If you like really commit to evil, you know, but like these guys can't even like be happy about being the bad guys. They're just so miserable all like the that. time. Like that Obama, the uh, yeah. former national security guy that was threatening that Egyptian guy, he was like really enjoying like the evil that he was doing at that moment, like threatening to deport him and take his picture and send it to Egyptian authorities. He was like happy about it. You're like that's that's what I expect, you know, evil people to be, not like sad and somber. Yeah, let's and let's bring back the old evil, like when Hillary Clinton is like, We came, we saw, he died. <laughs> <laughs> or like when Bush is like, no weapons under there. And everybody starts like, oh, no weapons under there. And everybody starts laughing. Now they're just like, like, like beaten, battered, abused, miserable people. It's like, I like the fun, evil guys. <laughs> Bring back the fun, evil guys. <laughs> Yeah, what about what about the uh, and you'll make, like make evil great again. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> make evil great again. <laughs> Own nothing amazing. and be happy. Uh, these guys, they these like guys own sad, everything, and, and they're, they're unhappy. They're, they're telling you, uh, if if like you don't against, behave, well, you are guy. not coming to like our party. <laughs> oh man, you that's what, what I mean right guys, there. Like better. that's the that's that the meme better. right there. They always yeah. play their role, right? Like the the tier two bad guys, like Yellen, who work for Mr. Burns here. You know, like in the work for the banking system. At least the bankers are having a good time being a living nightmare and scourge on humanity. Like, I mean, just own it, bro. You know, just I mean, own you can it. You see it in Gensler's face all the time. He enjoys oh, he what, he, what he what he does. Oh, he he loves fucking it loves so it. Much. <laughs> How many kids have I starved today? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a tyrant and I'm happy about it. On the other side, they really are like the meme of the guy just weeping their tears with money. It's like, oh, I'm so shitty. And they have so much money. They are earning so much money by just being there. 
All right, let's let's keep moving, Tux. All right. Uh, yeah. Oh, this is just one more part of this um thread. But today, fifty percent of Bitcoin hash rate is KYC'd. Transactions recently share- started being censored by miners again, and privacy is under attack. Yep, that's yeah. Ant pool, that really large pool, and I think both of both this and Foundry both do the KYC. Um, and I guess these right. are soon. Yeah, but some of them might soon. So yeah, that's the state of Bitcoin. Um, and we recently oh. saw some like the transactions that were left out of. I think, being F2, by my I think it was right? F two pool that would do it. That was doing that, and they like uh, back, they backtracked or whatever. Back client, yeah. It was an OFAC thing, right? Yeah. 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 They I have were a censoring for that later. So we'll talk about that later. All right, all right. Um. So. Redain, who runs uh, Kuno right now, um, he put a, an admin warning for a couple fundraisers, I guess, that are sketchy. So if you scroll down on the pages for the fundraisers, there'll be like a warning if it's been like potentially an obvious scam. He didn't take them down or prevent you from donating to them, whatever. It's just kind of a warning for some obvious scammy standouts, I guess. I, lo- I just oh, love yeah. that Kuno's Here's that article. so much. No, yeah, Kuno Dude. is awesome. Uh, and yeah, you're, you're, really you're, gonna, you're, gonna get, you're gonna get scam. You're gonna get a lot of scams on there. So just be vigilant. Yeah. See, I like I like that though. Like he, you know, they put the there's a warning. Like, hey, this might be a scam. This looks like right. uh, what other scams look like. You at know, if you you do it at your own risk, and people yeah. still get to do it if they wish to. Right. Yeah, that's great. Sure. It's like that. Uh... You know those memes on places on the internet that I dare not speak publicly about, like, let kids decide when they're old enough to drink and drive, or would you rather have a smoking kid or a dead kid sort of deal? Like, just, like, these horrible, horrible ideas that just, like, catch on like wildfire, you know? It's sometimes, like, the... uh, the scammy stuff becomes a meme that's like stands in total opposition to tyranny in the most ironic ways. Right. And just the fact that you can go on the internet and fund an absolute like backwards scam completely like unbridled is a powerful message of, you know, people should be free to do what they want with their money. And as as soon as anybody's like, well, Kuno funds these scams, you just point it like, the state lotteries or whatever and just be like hey wait a minute now all right so here's that here are those missing transactions Uh, my mining pool observer project recently reported six ofac sanctioned transactions as missing from locks four of these transactions were likely filtered by f2 pool this is the first filtering based on ofac sanctions i've seen and that page goes to here which goes into much greater depth talking about this and um, it appears that it might be the first pull from Asia to comply with U.S. sanctions law. So they're already trying to, these large, these really large pools that have a decent amount of power are already trying to censor transactions. So it's not looking too great for, for Bitcoin and its decentralization. Uh, but of course, you can look and read this and get a greater depth at what exactly is going on. But yeah, that's that's... Not great, not ideal. And this is interesting. I I didn't know about this uh, earlier this week. Apparently, SideShift has removed Monero from their platform with no prior notice at all, which sucks because we have SideShift in Cake Wallet. So, I guess Cicada Wallet only had SideShift in their wallet, yeah. and now they don't have something you can use to swap with Monero in there. Oh, uh, so that's that's a little bit disappointing. SideShift as well. Trocador uses SideShift. Yeah, I think it's one of the yeah, options, I- right? I think Monarujo does. Oh, Monarujo. Um, is that true, Andreas? Yes. It's yeah. Sadly, it's still true. I mean, they haven't, they, they, they got rid of the, this is not news, actually. I don't know oh, okay. Why it's, why, why it's news for Cicada? Um, I had mm. no idea that Cicada was using SideShift, but for months, um, SideShift removed uh, the XMR pi- pair from their website. While ago, yeah. But yeah. but it looked at, at first we didn't notice because it looked like it worked on Monerujo uh, on the API, and um, after that they say that they will keep supporting the uh, users of Monerujo, 
but that's the moment that we started working on alternatives because i mean it's not so eventually did they just shut it down for the api also probably probably yes because i've tried i tried it it's supposed supposed to be it's supposed to be working for example but you get one of every three transactions went through the other just gives an error it's it's, it's shitty i see that's a shame yeah it kind of sucks because i i don't think they were there's like there's like all these people are acting out of like ex- like not not actual legal pressure i think to be like i have no idea but we had no prior notice from from their side at all that's interesting so well I we got other good options out real quick uh on the previous story about censored transactions and i have kind of a theory but I think it would be best elaborated if I throw it out there. Maybe body wants to think about it first, but my theory is that from an economic standpoint, they have a very tight window to test the OFAC compliance systems that they've put in place um, to try to number one, make sure that the technology works and that the pressure works. But then once they have like a working model on Bitcoin, try to extrapolate what they've learned for its application to their real targets, which I would imagine Monero is one of those real targets. But basically the this principle of being able to censor transactions with pressure is uh, like trying to figure out what percentage of miners would have to be able to censor transactions to reliably like oppress the effect, the efficacy of the systems. Um, And the other thing is, I I mean, not necessarily exactly side shift, but some of the liquidity between different cryptos plays into that. So the two stories together right like it in order to in order to place these systems of like trying to have ofac compliance shutting down certain things from being mined or added to the chain in any way and then any means by which you would move that liquidity um across different chains i think that the basically the people who would stand to gain the most from preventing um certain transactions from going through they probably know that the technology is so rapidly outpacing the the uh, ability to control it that they might not have even been ready to try to censor transactions but they don't have a choice Um, so I think you're I think you're spot on about the um, about their end goals and the kinds of censorship that they want to accomplish. Um, this isn't just about preventing a few terrorists with Bitcoin uh, on OFAC. This is you know this is the slow progressive creep that uh, that you know the government modus operandi does. I I do wonder um, if they can actually get some kind of robust censorship mechanism onto Bitcoin. How much can they expand that? Can they identify atomic swaps into Bitcoin? Um, how much can they stop uh, coin joins, right? Even though coin joins have some problems, et cetera, like it's still better than than having no privacy on Bitcoin. Um, I do think that, I, I don't think it's that Bitcoin's going to be able to stop this sort of slow roll lava push that the government has already done. Like, it people have already kind of resolved to sell out to BlackRock and the ETF and hyper- uh, sorry, institutional FOMO and, you know, all that stuff, reserve asset, right? These are the narratives you hear in Bitcoin now. So the people there are largely ready to become a reserve asset for, for that number go up um, component. This so, is good for Bitcoin. <laughs> this is, yeah, yeah, exactly. No matter what happens, it's going to be good for Bitcoin. So um, I think that my, in my mind, just as a wag, like not even a, not even a scientific wild ass guess, just a wild ass guess, I would say 60% of the hash power Existing in <clears throat> existing in jurisdictions that um, you know that are Western friendly, basically. So Europe, EU, United States, Canada, um, maybe Ireland, UK, stuff like that. And I think the last time I checked, which was actually just a few days ago, it looked to me like there was about 
Um, maybe it's like 55% in, um, in those jurisdictions. So if you control 60% of the hash power, then what you can effectively do is orphan blocks that have transactions that aren't supposed to be there. Now, right now, again, like we saw the, the teaser with the marathon digital, they're like, we're going to not include these in our own blocks. And now it's uh, ant pool. Is it ant pool? I think it is. Um, that was, that was not including these OFAC transactions. Um, you know, so the question is like, how quickly is that going to come? My guess is that they, they won't really, try to put those caps on until after the bull market or maybe like as the next bull market is like, you know, significantly in progress. But um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing. Like, even if you're a miner that would include censored transactions, if 60% of the hash power, if you know, they're just going to orphan your block, most likely you're going to also censor as well. Like you, you can't smaller miners can't accept not getting blocks like that. Um, like they'll just go under. So I, I do think like that's a danger that's happening. And I think it's another reason why the cabal wants to keep, I think Bitcoiners in terms of number go up and, and number one market cap, I think Bitcoin is like, has a solid position to stay number one or maybe number two because um, because keeping the liquidity there makes it harder, right? To, to get into Monero, if they can make surveillance, if they can make censorship, it's going to make it harder to use coins like Monero in that liquidity swap kind of situation you were talking about. So those would be my thoughts. And and that's kind of why I was saying like the the gate is closing on these people, because uh, like that that level of control, right? And knowing that it, I it, it's my opinion that I mean these people who are actually like imposing these they're not dumb, right? And you know that when they're wargaming out like doing something like that this early, right? it stands to push the the never ending like tide of innovation um it it only pushes people to do getting out of those kinds of transaction systems faster whereas if they could have like cemented a little bit further bitcoin's dominance and then exercised these levels of control it would have served their purposes so much better, right? Because ideally they would have, you know, at least in most nations, a CBDC style system and even make it where you could go from Bitcoin to CBDC, at least for a while, in order to basically like replace the exchanges. And look, they started going after the exchanges, right? Like that was probably part of the, the grand scheme. But the problem is, they're going after the exchanges, but they're also simultaneously outing themselves as we can orphan your blocks. And there, as long as it's one of these transparent Fed coins like Bitcoin, right? Because that's what it has become. What they're doing is they're ruining their own propaganda against the target audience. And there's no way that they would do that on purpose unless they were feeling a tremendous amount of pressure to move both of these operations at the same time. Like there's no way you would unleash your, your SEC dogs on, on these exchanges while simultaneously not having put in place your own like government sanctioned replacement for the exchanges unless you were like we're losing the innovation race horribly right now but they I mean, are an interesting you know take i appreciate sure. where you guys are going with this but show is going long and we do have some more news <laughs> okay so <laughs> i'm sorry but we should move on <laughs> but, sorry, um, we need we need a dedicated um body in uh, alaska a non-segment um yeah no that's I'll really good <laughs> but uh i'm just gonna get through the rest of these really quickly uh, so next up, we've got South Korea to invite 100,000 citizens to test CBDC in 2024. So more CBDC stuff coming out, of course, like we've seen going on with a lot of the world over the past couple of years. So that's happening. And then next, uh, I mean, this person calling him Bitcoin friendly. I think he's just crypto friendly in general. Um, announcement of Malay winning Argentina. Yeah. And the, the crazy part is that he won 55% of the votes. Uh, which is pretty good. That's that's pretty good. Um, I think a lot of people were not expecting him to win. Is a general sentiment I got, but no, he won by a decent 
uh, a fair amount, a fair amount. So, yeah, yeah he's the uh, most voted president in Argentinian history. Really? In so are, are uh, all the Argentinian elections like, like it was really a referendum? Then? Yes, it is. Uh, let, let me let me look it up. So last uh, runoff we had um, uh, one second. Have you guys ever heard of this the saying it's easier to lie to somebody than convince somebody that they've been lied to? Yes. This is one of the reasons why I think that he's going to win a lot of seats in the midterms is because people are not prone to admitting that they were wrong. And if you have that many people, especially with that kind of turnout, who have committed to the idea of doing something different, it's very yeah. likely that they'll be stubborn enough to make it through the midterms. Yeah, last runoff, it was only decided by 1%. So now uh, nearly wow. 10% is a lot. Yeah. yeah. That's impressive. That's cool to see. All right. Um, we, we covered the topic thoroughly. Yeah, we earlier. did. Uh, just a few more. Um, we've got this post talking about how um, your Bitcoin money might be, become dust because of the rising fees. If you've got less than a certain amount in your Bitcoin wallet, it could easily just become unusable because you don't have enough in there to actually make a transaction. Um, which is an ongoing issue with Bitcoin and the uh, the fees have just been skyrocketing as of recently. But remember, El Salvador, this is the people's money. Oh, yes, of course, of course. Oh, but then Lightning Network, guys. Lightning will save us all. Wasn't it? Uh, I think it Roger Ver. Like... BTC, so you have to spend that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> remember uh, Roger Ver during the block the block size wars when he's like, if we don't switch to something different, it's going to price poor people out of making small exchanges. I wonder whatever happened with that. Uh, right. This is pretty cool. Um, I don't. I, I can sort of read what this says, but the headline is Argentine, Argentine President Javier Milei confirms he will shut down the central bank. So, uh, yeah. I guess it's happening. What do you think, uh, Gone About Fire? Hopefully, I mean, he has, uh, he doesn't have the Congress majority, so yep. he will need yep. to pull some tricks. Like, for example, he, uh, the Constitution uh, doesn't allow uh, the government to have no currency, but technically, we still have a gold back, a gold backed currency from the mm. 19th century that technically it's still around. So technically, we can use that to shut down the central bank. So, you know, it would be interesting. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. That is cool. That that's is a much, logic that's a much better currency for sure. Is there any way that I can purchase these gold backs? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, they actually, <laughs> you know, they are collectibles. They're cool. I want to own one. It's called um, um, Peso Oro Argentino. I believe. Oh, wow. Awesome. And the last um, link that was given to me, um, Noseboy is asking what happened to Crypto Grampy. I guess Crypto Grampy yeah. sort of disappeared from Twitter. And also I noticed recently uh, at bit underscore Thanos, uh, who I'd been following like since, the, since I got on here, he doesn't seem to exist anymore either. So they both just kind of disappeared. Unfortunately, well, Crypto Grampy was working on some some interesting Monero projects. Right? Yeah, I don't know if he's like gone, gone, or if just if Twitter is gone. I don't know if this was his proper. No, handle, I think uh, if you check the thread, I think somebody. Did. He he moved yeah. to the orphan block. Yeah, so right, click he... on that. That's gonna. I gotta open this another browser because of the Twitter tracking link. Like walking this one. Give me a second. I don't think anybody got that joke, yeah. but you like he moved yeah. to a different block, the orphan block. You know, the, okay. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. Lame joke. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, we get it. Uh, archiving this project 10, 16, 23. The project is no longer maintained. Forks, welcome. Oh, That's wow. So he, he archived Hot Shop. 
What else was he working on? What are some of his other? Okay. Had a lot of repos. Awesome. Most of these are his forks from other stuff. I think it was XMR Pocket Note and Hot Shop, I guess. Which is yeah, um, hopefully he comes back. Yeah, grampy. Oh, kind of sad. Yeah. I think a lot of people in the community followed him. And same with Pit Thanos. I have no idea what happened to that guy. Yeah. Uh so yeah. Well, sad. But we'll see. I mean it happens. They're anons, so I just want to take a break, I guess. Or he's still among us under other other names. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of be. the time a lot of the time they'll just reemerge under a different Love. pseudonym and you don't even know. So 